You're from Canada, right? I am. The Canadian, oh yeah, you know, the Canadians are different. Did you say it's so popular? What is it that connects with people? It still does. As far as The, the Exorcist itself, the film, the novel was a, a work of art. It's, it's a genius. But William Peter Blatty, who wrote the novel, had reasons to write the scariest film or, or book of all, of all time and then make the scariest movie. And um, because he put all the right ingredients together, Billy Friedkin, who had just run the Academy Award for the French Connection, Ellen Burstyn, one of the most amazing, extraordinary actresses of all time, Max von Sydow, Jason Miller, and when you hear all the different stories of how they became involved with the project, you take all these ingredients, plus the best cinematographer, Owen Roisman, plus the best special effects people, Marcel Vocatier, they created things that had never been done before. And the search to find me, you know, the, for, for Reagan was, I was a working child actor in New York. I'm from Connecticut. And we were raised, if you work in the business in New York, you do modeling or commercials or whatever you may do, small movies, you then leave your work at home and you sort of have two, two lives. You don't talk about your work. And I wanted to be a veterinarian. So I was this really normal child that was a professional. So to find sort of like I was raised, um, they wanted me to be in, in the Disney movies. Give you room to cut on the laughing. It's okay. They wanted me to be in the Disney films. My. I know, we, but you can't. You can try. Just hang on. He's talking. We'll pretend. So they want to use a Disney character? Mm hmm. Wow. And. You good? So they wanted me to be in the Disney films. My father made a decision for me not to come out to California, and I was sort of heartbroken, so I said, I really want to apply myself to my education, my schooling, to become a veterinarian. So when the movie came along, it was like, you would interview for movies, you would interview for different things. Nothing ever happened, even if you, may, if you, if you did the job. I'd done other movies and soap operas and things, and it was nothing happened. So I wouldn't know anything. I had no baseline to know any different. While we were making the film, you know, it was very difficult, obviously, for a child to do a film, especially because I was not interested in the subject matter. It was an adult subject matter. And it's about religion, and of course I have all this makeup on, I don't understand what they're doing. You've got all these special effects that had never been done, you have. I even the dummy, for instance, where the head spins, I do part of it, the dummy does the rest of it, I come back to it, and it's very technical. All the levitation and the different things. So I was not able to put anything together that had continuity. I didn't understand, and I gave up about a year into it, seriously. And so a year and a half later, and then you start to see bits and pieces when you add um, your soundtrack, your voiceover. So you're working on the different, to correct, you know, noises or problems, to make the sound crisp, to, um, to change. Of course, Mercedes McCambridge is one of the, uh, the main part of the voice, but it's my voice in there, it's Billy Freakins, it's a lot of things and it's, it's manipulated. Uh, through the, the soundboard that's not the right terminology, but it's it electronically manipulated. So it's really not one voice, even though people think so. <laughs> so when the movie came out, I realized that it was an extraordinary film and this was gonna change my life, but I could not even understand to what level nor could Warner Brothers, nor could the journalists, nor could the public. So back then it was, so back then it was very, uh, the spirituality was maybe uh, passed through because you had so many religious groups that just were like, no, you can't do, oh my God, you know, in the Catholic Church. I get it now, so many years later. 
but you have such a strong fan base of young people to the older generation, you know, 70, 80, maybe 90 year olds who had seen it when it first came out, but they showed their kids and their kids and the grandkids. You know, the people that show their six year olds. I don't agree with showing the film because it's not a monster film, but that's the way they'll always perceive it. It's a theological thriller that you will never understand completely until we pass over because no one can tell us what exactly is on the other side. But we're told, and in your heart, you should know, to live a, a good life, to be good to others. And the, the quality, therefore, hopefully in our afterlife, will be what it is, what is promised to us. You have a lot of violence. Now, the movie opens in Iraq. We're, we're fighting the war in Iraq right now. I look at it and I think, wow, we haven't changed. We're still fighting over religion and war. And it's, there's, there's a lot of violence that's been in the world since it began. And that's what, in, in order to praise God. So there's a lot of conflict right there in itself. Spirituality to me is within here. It's right here in your third eye. It's found through meditation and spiritual, in, to, to, to put goodness out in the world. But there's so much anger and violence and their interpretation of their religious books. And it's a very, very scary time. I think the exorcist represents something that people, they're drawn in in some way to try to understand. We hear about the devil, we hear about God and goodness. You reap rewards by doing positive things in the, in the world. But for some reason, The Exorcist is looked at in so many different ways that even it's hard for me to understand. But those are taken as just as a monster film. It's not, it has nothing to do with it. The monster, of course, is what's inside of us. Any one person can have that monster inside of them. It's how, what you put out. Um, somebody pointed out recently, Reagan has always been, was the victim. We knew that, but if I was the victim as the child, how come the press and the religious groups persecuted me for a job that was created by adults, that was not something that, that, I, uh, that I controlled, but I was condemned for being part of it. And it was really a shame. It was very difficult growing up. Now it's okay, because so much has been exposed. I'm strong-willed to survive. I'm strong-willed to find the good in others and the good in in life, but life has gotten more more difficult, and I try to find. I feel that I have something to do with change. I'm supposed to, and it's mostly everybody knows I do the animal welfare, but it's animal and human welfare. So the, it goes hand in hand. A lot of people are struggling emotionally, physically, financially. Whether you have a physical um, uh, handicap that people can see, oh, well, okay, let me have compassion and help that person. But some people, their handicap isn't, isn't here. Their can, handicap is, is hidden. And they're struggling in so many ways. So the world is, you know, it's on this teetering process right now. And, and it's, I know that by doing my work, by animal and human welfare, doing what I can to help. We help feed the food pantries through the Linda Blair World Heart Foundation along with all the animal rescue and help people to try to find their way back when they've lost everything. The financial crisis really put America in, you know, in a horrible situation and uh, worldwide, really. But I know there's some, there's some relation and none of it would happen without the exorcist. So I know it's very important. Do you think that, um, and then all of a sudden 73 hits and Satan's back. Do you think you you guys impacted culture in that way to bring Supernatural back to people's minds? You know, because I was so young, and I'm not Bill Blatty, and I'm not Billy Friedkin, 
I've had a whole different experience and a whole different ride. And of course, mine was to survive. Survive the movie, survive the impact that it had on the world, and to say, that's not who I am, this is who I am. And I fought for that. So I know I'm the, it's, there's a reason I'm the one that was chosen, and I know that. Very few would have survived. However, good and evil will always be. Good and evil has been on the planet forever. And I'm gonna ask you to hold for one second, okay? Could you not do that while I'm filming? Thank you. It's okay. I know you got a couple. Thank you. I'm sorry, it's hard for me to concentrate. And he's, it's okay. I'm sorry. You're welcome. A little difficult to do a photo shoot and. <laughs> Kidding. I was kind of curious as a youngster how you, how you dealt with the big theological questions. Because you told me you were at press junkets, you were asked these things, you know, whether you're in Japan or. When the, when the movie came out, in America you have your, your different religious groups from the Catholic Church, which was working with Billy Freakin and Warner Brothers, and that was the surprise to many. And I was raised Protestant, we didn't talk about the devil, never knew about the devil, and so on. And then you've got um, your Jewish culture, you had, I'm trying to remember back then, um, the Southern Baptists, the Mormons, they, 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 were, pe they were peaceful people. <laughs> But there were a lot of groups that caused great aggravation. Warner Brothers and Billy Freakin dealt with that. They didn't put that on me at all. But they found that they really needed to send me around the world. So first it started in LA with these very large press junkets because people don't realize there were no one-on-ones really back then. To get that, you, there were a couple people, Barbara Walters who, um, I never did an interview with Barbara. Maybe they thought that was probably too tough. Um, and I can't think back, it was so long ago. Um, but, so you would sit on these uh, table dais where you would speak to large groups and, and people were asking and you really could see in their eyes that they thought that I held the answers to questions that have been unanswered for thousands of years. And I didn't know what to do. I, I'm 15. So I'd answer as honestly, I mean, I've never changed. You know, I'd answer as honestly as I could, but I was really shy back then. So I'm not shy anymore. I got through it. You know, you face your fears and learn how to get over things. And a lot of it had to do with, um, um, just being honest, and, and then I would do somebody to uh, Australia and Japan, and now you've got language barriers and uh, customs that were different. Australian customs were different back then. There were certain words you said down there that they thought I was swearing, and of course I wasn't. And then in Japan, I had to wear a cere ceremonial kimono to be respectful. What people don't realize nowadays, like even up to a few years back, I mean, you had to dress a certain way, you, whether it was job, work, at home, you a little lady at home, whatever. And in business, you wore a suit and you did this and you did that. Now change countries. They would make you dress accordingly at times with what they thought was, was okay. You know, now you got the kids, the kids have no idea. Pull up your pants. You know, it's it'd be more respectful. And I think a lot of that has been lost. In, I had to learn what certain things were in the different countries so that I could be respectful and being as controversial as I was, not of my own accord. It, it was hard, but it didn't matter what the culture or what, you know, what country I was in, the questions were the same about religion and God and the devil. Okay. So it didn't matter what, the, what the, uh, the country or the culture, the questions were all the same. And it was about good and evil, God, religion. I was 15 years old 
and I was, I, from my point of view, are you kidding me? That's an adult asking me, a child. And I thought they really want me to answer this. So I mean, I really tried to search spiritually and I did the best I could with it. It was a very, very strange position to be in at, at such a young age. Okay. And what, did you then look into demonology essentially, exorcism? No. Did you try to figure any of this out? No. At what, at some Here age? is my thoughts on it. Um, I think a lot of people maybe misunderstood and assumed that I had an interest in, wow, big planes. I do have an interest in big planes. My dad was a Navy pilot. He was a test pilot. So he's no longer with us, but I asked him everything I could before he passed. I think that's really important that people do that. Ask your parents whether you like them or not. But it taught me who I was because of his mm, tenaciousness, uh, his, um, I knew that I was different. Challenge, challenge yourself. Um, and so, and that's important. So that yes, I so like you're planes. Not gonna answer this question. You don't have an answer, so I can no. ask you a different question. The qu yeah, I can. An the question is, the question is, did I have an interest in and or study demonology? It, it's really quite the reverse. It made me study um, spirituality, read more. Um, I studied uh, as much as I could about um, understanding the human mind spirit because it's very difficult to be young and a teenager anyway, but to be challenged with the industry, to be challenged with untruths in, in the news media, to be criticized and rumored about and know that those are not true statements splattered across the, across the world. So that would be a side of uh, the devil, if you want to look at it that way, all the untruths. But because I considered myself spiritual, religious, a good Protestant, you know, good churchgoer, I went to church forever. I studied many different religions. Um, but really, the psychology um, is something that I, I had to to survive. So you know, I read a lot, read enough, looked at different writings and things, and. I, I worked very hard to stay of sound mind and body. I still pray, but my spirituality is inside and it's for goodness only and to, to stop the madness and, and to have the strength to, to go on and to understand what my journey is and how to help others. Do you believe in demon possession after all these years? Hmm? Do you believe in demon possession that that could happen to someone? I come from the mindset that it's mental illness and I always will. Do I believe? I think if you tap into something that's very dark and there are areas in the world that have cultures, religions and situations that we may not understand and I'm not going to speak about but many are familiar with that possibly could bring on something very difficult in a situation within, within, within a person. I don't really have time to go there. I don't believe in doing anything, dabbling around the dark side. Mine is all about positive. If we don't make a lot of changes in the world within the next, like yesterday, there is no future. You have to, you know, I'm the kind that looks like you've got the environment, you've got how you're feeding the people, you ha how are we farming animals, you know, I'm a vegan. So I look at all the different things. There is no future unless people make the changes now. I don't have children for a reason. Is that just man being bad to man or is there a malevolent being though that is? I believe it's man, it's man again, it's, it's greed, which is the devil. It's right here in front of us every day the chessboard of life of good and evil. It is right here every day. Are you good and groovy? Do you have a final, do you have an anything, let, put a little nightcap on it? The nightcap on it is, you know, you brought demon possession into people's minds, to your character, all the people who are involved in it. What do you want them to, to leave them with? Because it's, it's not, I'm sure it's not just a scare, it's probably something else. 
that that movie was about. Am I, am I reading too much into it? Bill Blatty was one of the finest comedy writers <laughs> in Hollywood. And he had his own reasons that he chose to write the scariest novel of all time. And he was challenged. And there are many people in the world, you challenge us, and we say, oh, really? <laughs> That's the part of the, the beauty of the human spirit. And he wrote the scariest book of all time that would become the scariest movie of all time and has withheld in 40 years later. It has not stopped. It has only increased in its interest. But it's how people perceive the film. So young people will never, ever look at it the way an adult will with the knowledge they have of religion and spirituality. For me, in my findings at my age, what I would strongly suggest to anybody is follow the goodness that you need to find within yourself to be more compassionate to others, to give back, whether it is financially or of your time, your body, to volunteer to help others. I don't care. My, my passion is the animals because they cannot speak for themselves. I did the farm animals and did all that through the vegetarian and veganism. But when I turned around, I saw that the uh, companion animals that serve man for companionship in, in our military, police, handicap, you name it, they help with cancer, they help with stroke, they help with heart problems. They have, there's so much more intelligence to them than people realize. But when I turn and I see that they're in trouble, that's why I said, oh, no, 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 you go back to the basics. That's what I was taught. But go to the next level. That's me. I gave and I give to the elderly and am respectful. I gave and I give to the children of other people. Let others step up to the plate as well. I don't know how long I'm here. I'm just trying to influence people. By giving, the world will be a better place. I believe that is the message from the film, is that it's about faith, it's about commitment, it's about believing within yourself and having the strength to be that much more when the challenge is so strong and great. And you would rather lash out and that's what a lot of people do. And where have we gotten? A more violent society. But where's the violence coming from? Pain, pain. Where's it coming from? The family unit. So there's so much. But you can influence a child in need in a positive way. And that's what I strongly suggest is that we keep the aerodynamics going in the world. There's gonna be new, some new super plane. I flew the Concorde. Oh yeah? I did. You did you hear that? I did, I caught one of the last rides. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. I did that for his store. I wanted to know what that was like. That, they were really, wow, we were really up there. And they were really rude to me. Ha! <laughs> oh, those French, they have a lot to <laughs> Yeah, I did, I took the Concorde. By giving back, you will reap the rewards that we are taught that is the gift of life and why we are here on the planet. Life is very short. So whether you're here for a short period of time or a long period of time, it is still very, very short and people need to realize and relish and try harder to be better people. And that is um, be kind to the planet the farming, it's serious, far, how we farm, yeah. because there are chemicals used, they have to keep changing the different um, um, uh, pies, so to speak, of, of where we're farming. And um, it all affects the future of, of the plant and, what, and how, what we have to do to the farm animals in order to keep the, the flies down, this pesticide use, that's what people are intaking. All of the cell, communications, you know, I really encourage people, get it away from your head. Get away from your head, get, a, get some of that technology away, keep it, be careful what you have around your babies, uh, you know, and, and I, be smarter 
watch your microwaving. I don't know. Just be smarter, be careful. 